You cannot, it is unacceptable. You cannot in any airline assessment day, interview, anything. You cannot say that safety is not important. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you guys are great, wonderful, fantabulous, and fun. I don't know if you can see by my um <laughs> My la my matte liquid lipstick today. I'm coming with just a tad of cabin crew vibes, which means it's only it's only expected for me to do a cabin crew video. So as you can tell by the title, I'm doing a Q and A. You guys have been asking me questions through emails, through Instagram, through Twitter, like. Honestly, you guys are amazing through YouTube in the comments. So I'm going to go through every single one of them and answer some questions because I feel like there's questions that I get asked all the time, the same thing. So let me just answer them from now. And then maybe if you guys ask some more other questions and I let them pile up like how they've been piled up now, then I'll do a Q&A part two. Oh, wait, we were missing something here. We're missing. Um, I don't think you guys have hit that little subscribe button down there. Um, do me a favor, mate. Get the cans in. Hit that subscribe button for you, will ya? And when you're done, hit that like, comment, and make sure you don't leave without hitting that subscribe button. Let's go. Okay, so we'll start with all the YouTube comments. Why did you leave? I left because I only wanted to do it for a year, and then I'd done it for coming up to a year. After a year, my notice period would have been more than, I think I was on, I was on two weeks notice period, or was it a week? I think it was one week's notice period, I think, I can't remember. Um, but after that, it would have went to a month, and I was like, nah, I need to leave. So I originally only wanted to do it for a year, um, then it was coming to the end, I was like, well, my time's done. I've been to 80% of the places that they had at the time, so why not? Plus I was getting homesick, and I wanted something more level grounded, like I wanted to see, I wanted more of a social life, more of a work balance, more, just more stability. So I'd done it for the year, I had all my fun, it was time to get like a proper job. This is from Crystal Owens. Hi Crystal, I have my assessment day, so what day did they, what did they get you to read? How low is the pay? Less than £1,200 a month or worse? Um, so I can't remember what they told me to read. Um, I remember, I think you're talking about the scenario. I remember the scenario was about, um, I think it was about like a hotel with a bad customer service and basically you had to um, give good customer service and manage that customer experience without having to ask for your manager. So I think they wanted to see how well you could work individually using your own initiative basically um and in terms of the pay the pay is basically dependent on what you get so i can't tell you what the pay is at. i think the lowest you could possibly get is about 1100 but that depends if you're going to get a month full of short haul um the most that i've had is i think 1700 and that's with a mixture of short haul and long and long haul so the money was okay the money was good um but obviously with all the strikes that's going on i'm assuming that they got way more than that like into the two grand so i've got an assessment day for rich areas as well on the whatever day um any tips you could give um okay if you've got an assessment day with va let me just tell you as soon as you walk through that building they are literally watching you so go in there don't be like hi hi but don't go in there and just sit to your side. They want to see how well you can mingle with people because when you're cabin crew, essentially you're going to be meeting different people every single day. You will come across the same people. Like I remember I had this lady and literally she was on majority of my Antigua flights and we got on, we got to a point where we made friends because I was just always seeing her all the time. You build that relationship. But majority of the time you will be meeting people for the first time. You're meeting different kinds of people. People that are maybe ill, people that are regular flyers, people that are first time flyers, business passengers, um, like all different types of people, celebrities maybe. So they want to see how well you can go with people. Just be yourself. If you're going to try and pretend to be something that you're not, that nine times out of ten they can pick up on it. So how long did it get how long did it take you to get a start date with BA? I'm just about finished my references, but working abroad. Do you get start dates fairly quick or does it take a while? 
Also, when you said about after a year you have to start the whole process again, like as in go into the assessment day all over, it took me a long time to get my start date um, because of my references. My references were all over the place and at the time they were doing references with this company called Procious, I think. I'm not sure if they're still doing it now, but obviously the, like you have to, they're quite laid back, so you kind of need to um, give them a bit of a nudge to kind of, you know, come on. I'm waiting, have you called this person? Like, what do you want me? The more proactive you are in getting your references is the more quicker you'll get a start date. Because as soon as you get your references completed, then your start date is, majority of the time, is there. Um, but if there's no start date there, then you're into a talent pool. Um, and then if you're in that talent pool for a year, then you have to do the whole procedure again. So I'm talking about the interview, the assessment day, and the references all over again. Like, you have to do all of that all over again, so. Um, just have a question for you. I've passed my assessment and interview and I'm starting cabin crew this month. However, I have medical, I have my medical and uniform fitting this week and they haven't mentioned anything about what to wear for it. What did you wear to yours? Um, I can't remember what I wore, but if they don't say anything, I assume you could wear whatever. I think when I got, no, when I went there, I wore another kind of informal, another kind of formal, like I was going for another interview. Um, I'm just quite paranoid in that sense where i feel like no matter what i haven't i've got the job but i haven't got the job yet because i haven't started flying so anybody that i'm gonna become like get in touch with along the journey to actually secure it an actual start date and whatnot so for like medicals and if they call me in quickly i'm gonna dress appropriately i think the only time that i didn't dress like up to par properly was medical. I kind of wore something formal but kind of laid back. But for my uniform fitting, I definitely wore formal clothing. Uh, how strict are the airlines on medicals? I have an allergy, so would I pass the basic requirements? Let me tell you something here. I got this woman that was so mean to me. I don't know if she was having a bad day or if she had a divorce or if one of her friends said they didn't want to be her best friend no more. But she was so rude to me. Like she was so mean to me. So it depends who you get. Because from some of the people that I spoke to, they were fine and then the, everybody that got the lady that I got it was bad like she basically failed my medical because when she when she um heard my heart when she listened to it apparently my heart was whispering and apparently it was beating like boom -tsh, boom -tsh. so obviously I've got first of all you can't tell people that like I, oh, let me tell you what happened so I get there now and you fill out this form and then basically they collect you and they say, okay, they go through the form with you. So one of them was like, oh, um, are you taking medication? I was like, no. And then she's like, oh, are you on any contraception? At the time I was, so I said, yeah, for the implant. And then she was like, oh, well, that's a form of medication then. So I was like, oh, sorry, like, I didn't know. Because obviously, you know me, I, I put you in your place. But... Because obviously, like, my, my job is in her hands, so I couldn't really get rude to her and give her the attitude that I really wanted to give her. So I was just like, okay, like, sorry, like, I didn't know. Then she goes, oh, um, do you get any headaches? Or this may I suffer from a migraine. She goes, so why don't you put that down? And I was, and then she was like, no, 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 what you need to do, you just need to go to the, to the, to the lobby and sit down there. I was like, no, 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 what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit right here and you're going to, I'm, I'm not leaving, basically, like, I'm not getting up. So she sat down with me and I think that's why the bitch didn't make me pass because th that day, i never forget, you literally have to take off all your clothes, like you'll be in your brown knickers or whatnot, but like I'd, I'd suggest you wear, i suggest you wear some, like, like if you're going to, I think I wore a dress that day, so I would suggest you wear something like a top that you could easily just lift up. So, because they want to they want to listen to your heart, but they don't want you to just lift it up partially, they want you to actually take it off. So... I took mine off now and then when we sat back down she was like do you have any heart problems I was like no these times I've still got my 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 stress and everything up in the air you know she goes yeah because I can hear I can hear your heart whispering so I'm like in the air like what what do you mean what what do you mean you can hear my heart whispering she goes sit down don't worry I'm thinking bitch don't you tell me to sit down bitch who the hell you think you're talking to ho I ain't my your little mama ho I ain't your mama ho you don't talk to me like that ho I'll whoop a bitch that because you just told me midway up in the air when I still I I even sat down properly. You're telling me, oh, I should calm down. Who the fuck you think you're talking to like that, motherfucker? Come on, let me get some of my brothers up in here. Let me get some of my brothers up in here. He will whoop your ass. He will whoop your ass. You, you, you told me you heard my my heart is whispering, and you just you telling me to calm down. How am I supposed to calm down? How am I supposed to calm? Houseway. 
How? How, fact, Sway? You take a few steps back to go. You ain't got the answers, man. Again. You ain't so, yeah. got the answers. How much? Is, how much to calm down, <sighs> bitch? So then, <laughs> so then afterwards. I sat down and she was like, yeah, I'm not going to pass you um, as fit to fly because technically you're not fit. I could have killed the bitch. So obviously then I had to get an emergency um, appointment at my GP. And then she then listened to me. It literally, the appointment took me literally two seconds. She put it on my chest. She's like, I'm not hearing anything. There's nothing wrong with your heart. So then she then had to give me a letter sign to say that that she i basically been checked and there was nothing wrong with me then i had to do another trip back up there and then give it to her and show her look there's nothing wrong and then she passed me bitch and you know what the funny thing is is that when she told me that my heart was whispering i she was smirking so she took joy in whatever shit she was doing bloody ho but they are strict so if you have an allergy you know sorry to come back on topic if you have an allergy, declare it. Just declare it. Like, anything that's wrong with you, just declare it. Okay. I want to apply to be a cabin crew, but do you know from experience how often they recruit? There aren't any current positions, but they don't say whether they only take place um, once a year or whether it's more often. Um, I think it's more than once a year. There are people leaving on a daily basis, people joining on a daily basis. There were new, um, like training groups every week so i wouldn't be surprised if they had roles going right now um but what i'll do is definitely keep an eye out because although it might be closed now it will definitely be open very soon how tall are you i'm five two well i'm five two and a half but i'm minimum requirement so i've literally just made it with ba do you stop over on short or mid haul or just long haul it sounds like the american system i've heard of where they fly several legs throughout the day then overnight somewhere before doing several legs then your final leg home is anything is it anything like that okay so you have short haul which is there and back you've got long haul which is there and then you might spend like 24 hours to two days to three days to four days to five days there and come back or you'll have um, two day six. So that could be like a Gatwick to Amsterdam, back to Gatwick to Jersey, stay overnight, come back to Am come back to Gatwick to Amsterdam and go home, um, which is basically six sectors over the course of two days. That's why we call it a two day six. So you've got that, you've got a range basically. I have a very bad confidence problem, but my dream has been most of my life to become an air hostess. I applied for EasyJet, but honestly, I need tips or advice to get a bit more confidence before the assessment. Be yourself. Like, there's nothing else that I can tell you. Just be yourself. Like, they want to see how you are with people. Unless you're a weirdo, but in order for you to have got this far, you can't be a weirdo. Just be yourself. When you arrive, I've seen someone arrive to the assessment day in black skinny jeans and white trainers and trainers that you get from like shoe zone don't do that like wear formal clothes remember you're still although you're going to be flying in the sky you're going to be prestigious in how you carry yourself you're going to be wearing good looking uniform you need to look the part everyone is going to look immaculate and everyone's going to look the same so you can't fall out of line and now i kind of understand why when people went to the easyjet interview everybody had their hair in donut buns and pencil skirt and stuff like that and obviously i stood out i think my personality was the reason why i just happened to get it um but if you don't have that personality then you you have to like you why would you want to apply to be cabin crew when you don't have the personality do you get I me mean? just be yourself be calm be cool collected and you'll be fine thanks for the video how often did you do layovers uh so basically layovers are stopovers um in terms of me saying over it depends like you will work blocks of six days with two or three days off depending on what you get on your last day so for example if you had like a Mar i think i'm not sure how it is now but if you had like a mauritius you would have three days off or if you had like a long haul you'd have two days off so it depends you'd work six blocks like six days and then you get like two or three days so that could potentially be like a like for example if you did a three-day trip to orlando because orlando would take three days and then you get two days off so it would all depend you might get like a two day like a, a, a like you get a four day antigua so then you do two short hauls and then your four day antigua that would be your six days hey y'all uh, was the new entrant training every day quite curious yes basically for six weeks every single day you get they'll give you a rotor like as if you were flying to kind of get you into the routine of having odd shifts here and there so you do get some days off but your days off might be in the week and not on the weekend but it's for six weeks I want to apply for cabin crew VA, but I'm concerned about some things with my CV. Wish you could give some tips. 
it doesn't matter where you're from it doesn't matter what you do like I've flown with some people who studied history in uni. I've had people that studied geography in uni. I've had people that were previous lawyers. I've had people that were literally 18 with no experience and just started. As long as you can show that you know what customer service is all about and you're willing to give that customer service, your CV will be fine. Did you do a cabin crew course? No, I didn't. Um, I went to school, I went to secondary school, did leisure and tourism went to college and did traveling tourism, went to uni and did international hospitality and tourism management. And then after that, I then applied, but I didn't have to go through those whole steps. Literally, I could have just went to school and from the age of 18 applied. Um, can I be cabin crew in BA even if I wasn't living in the UK or British? You can, because I've flown with people who commute to and from France. As long as you can make it for the assessment day and the interview day, and as long as you can make it to your shifts and do what you need to do, that's fine. So that is all my YouTube questions. Let's go to my emails now. Okay, cabin crew tips. This is from Amber. Hi, Amber. Hi, honey, hope you're well. I'm sorry, but I've just seen your YouTube video on your cabin crew career. Your insight was really helpful to me. Oh, thank you. Um, as I've just applied for EasyJet and I've gone through to the online assessment stage, which I need to complete soon. As you have done it already, can you give me any more tips and advice on how to complete the online assessment? Quite a, people, quite a few people say it's quite difficult. Um, I don't remember what the online assessment is because this is like going back two years now, but I'm assuming that it's a lot of customer service based. Just think of it this way. You as a customer, how do you want to be treated? Do you want to be treated like crap? No. So you're going to try and give the best possible service as possible. Like you're going to want to give the best, you're going to, you're going to have to uphold these standards. Um, if there's any role play scenarios, just think about how can you put the customer first to make sure that whatever situation is for them, that there's no, there's nothing that you cannot possibly do for them. That's all you got to think about and through any questions that you come through, you'll be able to ace it. This is from Lishka. Hi Lishka. Hey, I've seen your YouTube video about BA Cabin Crew. Wonder if you can help me. Sorry to bother you. I've just received an email. By the way, you're not bothering me. I've just received an email for assessment day for BA. I'm so excited but nervous. Do you have any tips seeing as though you got the job? I don't have any experience in cabin crew but did two travel and tourism courses. Thanks. Um, doo -doo -doo. don't be, as I keep saying, like, I'm going to keep saying the same thing over and over again. Don't be nervous, just be yourself. Um, you don't need any experience in cabin crew to be cabin crew. Um, but you just need to show that you're capable of doing the job and you're fit and you're mental and you're able to get on with a wide variety of people. Vanessa, hello. Um, I hope you're doing great. After watching a couple of videos for Cabin Crew, I came across your video and was wondering if you would help me, please. I have an interview with British Airways. I'm excited but nervous at the same time because it will be my first interview ever as a Cabin Crew. It's my dream to be an air hostess and this is a great opportunity. Is it possible if you could explain the two parts of the assessment? Questions that they have asked and any of the tips, please. I hope you see this message. I'll be waiting on your reply date. Thanks so much for your consideration. P.S. I am Jamaican too and you're funny. What? what, what? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Um, thank you very much, by the way. Um, any, if you could explain the two parts of the assessment. Okay, so you have a group, a group in a group assessment, like a group role play thing, where they give you scenarios. They don't care about this. This is the thing. They don't care about the scenario. They just want to see how you guys work as a team, how you guys work as a team, how you guys listen to each other, how you don't overpower whoever else you're working with and how you guys can all come to a, a conclusion, a decision, basically. So although, yes, pay attention to what it's saying and what the what the task is at hand, because I want to see, OK, are you actually going to come up with some relevant answers to, you know, put forward to the group? But majority of the time, they just want to see how you guys work as a group. Um, then you've got your role play by yourself. They just want to see in that role play that you can follow instructions you can understand a scenario and understand the situation and you can work independently with your own initiative. So you don't need to keep asking for help because there's going to be times where there's a situation on board and everyone's busy and you need to take control and be independent and do things yourself. All right to say, sorry, could you repeat the question or sorry, can I just think? It's OK. They'd rather you think and see that you're trying to understand rather than just trying to answer every question and just trying to come out with foolishness. Alicia. Hi, Alicia. Uh, hi, I was wondering if you could help me give some tips 
um, if you could help give me some tips or advice for what you did on the assessment day. I have my assessment soon. How many marks do you need to get through um, to the interview stage? When you do the role play in the group activity part, was it hard? The scenario that you are given in your role play, is it difficult, for example, for you to solve it? Was the answer on the paper from what you read? I want this so bad, it's been my dream since I was little. <laughs> Okay, so let me break this down. You don't need any marks to get through. You know in every group There's that one person who wants to take lead all the damn time What you need to be able to do is be fine have your voice Don't over don't try to make this a screaming match and argue with that person but you need to be able to make your voice heard. One thing that I did as well when I was, which I think kind of helped me, um, I think it was EasyJet or British Airways, one of the girls wasn't speaking, so I didn't want her to feel like we'd left her out, so I'd always say to her, so what do you think? Not to put her on the spot, but to kind of show that I'm aware of everyone that's around and I want to help. I want to help, I'm willing to help, I'm willing to notice, I'm, I'm willing to, p like I can pick up on body language and see when someone needs help or not, so there's no answer on the paper you kind of you had all that's on the paper is a scenario so you need to just understand what the scenario is and go forward with it it's so simple it's not hard whatsoever like it's not hard just stick to what you've heard and what is on the paper and what the person has briefed you about and just go with that samantha hi samantha Hi Riri, I saw your video on YouTube today and I swear it came at the best time as I have an interview with BA this Friday coming up. I have a tattoo on my wrist, I don't know what to do. I was reading on some forums that they're okay with it as long as it is not on your foot, neck or hands. There are some forums um, saying that airlines, airlines have zero tolerance for it. Can I tell them and show them that I can cover it up with makeup since it's not that big? I cannot remember, oh, there's this form, I'm not sure if it's on the BA website, but basically it shows like a picture of, like an outline of a, a man and an outline of a woman, and it shows where you cannot have your tattoo. On a woman, if I can remember quite, um, correctly, you shouldn't, you can't have something there. Since then, things may have changed because I know they were changing their guidelines, so double check, but when I was there, you can't have Hi it. Hi there, hun. Hi, Billy. Um, I had an easy jet assessment day the other day and I failed it. During the team challenge, I said that safety wasn't important, etc. So anyways, I failed, didn't get an interview. Okay, wait. I know, Billy, you don't want to hear this, but I need to tell you this because everybody else needs to hear that. You cannot, it is unacceptable, you cannot in any airline assessment day interview anything you cannot say that safety is not important that is that is instant you're not getting the job like from the moment you say that you're not getting the job safety is 110 percent like it's never not it's, it, it even goes past 110 percent safety is so critical so important like it's everything that you you live and you breathe and you smell safety when you are working on a day-to-day -day basis because it's not just the safety of yourself it's the safety of your colleagues the safety of your passengers the safety of your colleagues it's the safety of everybody so never ever ever make that mistake again no one ever even tried to make that mistake in the first place moving on to british airways please can you give me advice on what questions they will ask if i get to the interview stage and most importantly what task and what to expect and what i should do so the task and what to expect i've already gone through that um in terms of what they'll ask you is pretty much competency based questions they're going to go through your cv say what have you done why did you left there why do you want to work for british airways what do you understand of the job tell me a time when you gave good customer service tell me a time when you had to deal with a different customer um, a difficult customer tell me a time you had to give premium customer service tell me a time when you worked as a team tell me a time you worked as a team and the team wasn't working with you tell me a time when you had to be a leader and you had to take manage as a team like they'll ask you those competency-based questions so they're not they're your usual interview questions okay um i think it's vanilla vanilla rose hello hello there my name is pam what okay pamela <laughs> sorry <laughs> My name is Pam and I'm writing to you to find out about how to become a flight attendant for British Airways as I'm going to college next to study travel and tourism. I'm just wondering how hard it is, what would I need to do to get into it? I would appreciate it if you could answer these questions for me please, as I would really like to get an idea as I've always wanted to fly, be a flight attendant. Okay, uh, how to become a flight attendant? Just give good customer service, just apply online. Uh, Sabia, hi Sabia. 
Dear Riri, I really enjoyed watching your video about how you became cabin crew for British Airways on YouTube. Stumbled across your video when I was researching about BA cabin crew. I've got an assessment day coming up. I'm really nervous and I don't know what questions they'll fire at me on the one-to-one -one interview. Can you give me some advice, please? I've already done that, so just rewind back. Um, can you also tell me how the hours were, overall experience, etc. I'm graduating this year from university and I also apply for cabin crew roles um, because it's always my dream too. I checked your, edit, your channel out, love the energy in your videos. Thanks, girl! but thanks girl listen just don't plan like you can't plan your life being cabin crew because you i've missed baby showers i've missed christenings i've missed birthdays i've missed like just general things i've been late home i've missed dinner dates because you just don't know you might get home early you might be delayed you might have a cancelled flight you might be put on when you're on standby like you just don't know what when you're on standby it's like the worst thing ever because you just don't know what to do with yourself especially if you're on home standby you, you want to go out and you see the ice cream truck outside and you want to go there but you can't because you don't know as soon as you might get out they might say yeah we're ready for you to go like you don't know what to do with your life literally um and then when you're on airport standby you're just kind of sitting there like and don't think because you've made like a whole eight hours of standby so you've got eight hours standby airport standby and you're there and it's now like your last hour don't think because they ain't called you that you're gonna go home no they once called me five minutes as i was about to clock out five minutes and they're allowed to do it so hours can vary pretty much just don't just get prepared to not have a life and always be jet lagged on my days always be jet lagged and expect people not to understand how you feel be always being jet lagged not knowing what time it is not knowing where you are not knowing what what like what's the weather is it sunny outside is it raining is it snowing like you don't know what's going on outside expect that and expect people to always be upset when you can't make plans because they don't understand that you've literally just came back from barbados at five o'clock in the morning and your time is now Barbados time and it's just it's too much like it's too much just expect that okay that's all my emails so let's go on to my Instagram hey girl I love your videos on YouTube you are so inspiring and thank you so much for that I really want to become a flight attendant for British Airways but I'm five foot one are they struck on the le are they strict on height requirements um during the assessment day and is there a reach test honestly appreciate your help so much um they are strict you have to be five foot two minimum and they will measure you so when you go in there they will actually measure you and that's the first thing they do and if you don't make that then you're gone if you're too tall you're gone too before you even get to do the reach test because there's also a reach test so um yeah they are strict on that unfortunately then I've got someone who also basically asked me about being kicked out of training. Like, are they going to kick you out for anything? It is so hard for you to get kicked out of training. Like, I don't think you understand. When I when I watched that, that film, I think everybody who wants to be cabin crew has seen that film of the girl that wanted to be cabin crew with British Airways. And then, um, yeah, they just let her go. No. You have to be doing a lot of things. Like, as long as you're studying like although you're there you're not there to make friends you're there to study so as long as you're studying you're doing what you need to do you're getting your points you're getting your grades you're doing what you need to do you're not turning up late your hair is intact and you're presentable how are you going to fail like literally you have to go out of your way to fail you can't do that so it's not oh you know what i don't like you get out no you have to really try hard and the trainers are really supportive so so it's harder to fail than pass. Okay, and that is all my questions for today. I think you guys are tired of hearing my voice. So my throat is so bloody dry. Like I'm so parched right now. But I hope that was very, very helpful for you guys. If there's any other question that I have not mentioned in this video, please don't hesitate to comment down below. Email me instagram me don't tweet don't tweet me because well you can tweet me but i'm not really on twitter like that like i got a bag of notification just there but email me instagram me i have no problem or even comment down below in the youtube snapchat me like add me on snapchat and snapchat me if you want and i'll answer your questions to be honest probably if you snapchat me you'll get more out of me because then i have no op option but to open it um but i hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to give this a big thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe button down below um if anything i will see you in the next video peace to the middle east stay flying stay s <laughs> am i still flying or what's going on here see you guys in the next video bye